You have, you are a phenomenal ally, and we are so proud that you're here at our founding convention. So come on up, Stuart Acoff. Thank you, my sister. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Roseanne, for your friendship and for that overly generous introduction. It means so very much. And thanks to all of you for the opportunity to be here at this historic meeting, this Continental Congress, this convention, this historic assembly to create the largest nurse union in the history of America. This meeting, this assembly, this assembly, my brothers and sisters, this Continental Congress, my brothers and sisters, that each one of us will carry in our hearts and in our minds and in our very souls for the rest of our lives. Our nation needs this assembly. Our nation needs your unity. America needs your unity. You see, with so much at stake in America, with the potential and possibility for historic change, with our health care system being debated daily, even hourly, with the insurance companies and hospital chains trying to hold on to their power and their profits, America needs its primary caregivers, you, to be united and unified with a strong voice, power and strength that comes from unity and an agenda to return health care from profit making and profit taking to caring for our people. We need you. America needs you. America needs you. We need you to keep leading us toward a single payer system for health care. Don't give up that fight. Don't give up that fight. Don't back down. Don't turn around. Don't give in. Don't give up. Don't go, go back. Keep leading us towards single payer. Let me pause right now to publicly thank Roseanne and CNA and all of you for years of strong advocacy for a rational, sensible, humane, moral, realistic vision of a single payer health care system. And I want to thank. And I want to thank all of you, UAN, Walt, MNA, and CNA, for the vision and the wisdom to put aside whatever small things that may have divided you, to focus on the huge, important, critical things that unite you, to focus on unity, to build your power, and strengthen your voice so that with the solidarity of the rest of the American labor movement and all Americans of goodwill, you can enact your vision. Health care for every American, regardless of ability to pay or socioeconomic standing or employment status or accident of birth. Health care as a human right. And, and brothers and sisters and brothers, in the richest country in the history of the world, health care should be treated as the human right that it is, not just an investment opportunity for the wealthy and the rich. The rest of the developed world gets that. All of Europe and Canada and Brazil, even neighbors to our south, Brazil and South Africa and others. It is high time for us in America to catch up and we, America, need your leadership and your unity and your voice and your strength. 
Let me pledge, my brothers and sisters, following your leadership, following your leadership, that the time will come in America when no child ever has to go to bed sick and crying because her mom or dad can't afford health care. Let me pledge, brothers and sisters, that the time will come in America that never does a family lose their home because their mortgage goes into paying for health care for a family member in can with cancer. Do you know that 65% of all foreclosures are due to health care crises in America? 65% of all foreclosures. People lose their loved one. They suffer pain and indignity. And on top of that, they lose their home. How can we let that happen in America? Let me pledge, brothers and sisters, that following your leadership, the time will come in America that no family is financially crippled forever like my parents were because my sister had to be treated at Mayo's Clinic back in the 70s and 80s for Cushing syndrome, which they didn't understand, and grand mal epilepsy. My mother and father never got over that. They never were able to get over that hump. And my mother spent the rest of her life in poverty. She died at 64, suffering a massive heart attack in the classroom six months before she was to retire. And my, fam my father lives in poverty today with what my brother and I can contribute to his life. They never got over it. They lost their only daughter to a horrible disease, and they lost whatever income and wealth that they had accumulated. America is better than that, my brothers and sisters. Please give us your unity voice and strength to get there. All this and more is why at the AFL-CIO convention in September, we took the historic step to endorse single payer and what a step it was because of you. But that's not all brothers and sisters. We need your leadership to make health care and patient care better, to continue to fight for safe staffing levels, and we, the whole labor movement, are going to fight that fight with you right at your side, every bit of it. Today, America's labor movement and all Americans of goodwill Rejoice at your action here in Phoenix. We rejoice in this meeting, this Continental Congress. We rejoice in your unity and your vision. Brothers and sisters, we got a lot to do to heal America and make our economy work for working families again. It was only 30 years ago, just one generation, that we in America believed that what was good for working, America's was, working Americans was good for America. But we lost that vision. Somehow, against 4,000 years of human history, human wisdom, and sacred teachings, <clears throat> we let some snake oil salesmen like Newt Gingrich and Dick Cheney and Dick Army convince us that greed is good. That greed is not the worst part of human nature, but the best part of human nature. We let them convince us that we're all on our own. That if we're sick, it's a personal problem or a private crisis. That if we need health care, it's a personal problem and not a social problem. And the results have been disastrous. Working Americans' take-home pay has less buying power today than in 1973. The Federal Reserve will tell you that median family wealth is less today than in 2003. While the productivity of working Americans has gone up by 75% in the last 30 years, the value of your nurses' work every day has gone up by 75% in the last 30 years. Average wages stagnated for 25 years and have been declining 